Tonight on Unsolved Mysteries, four eerie tales for All Hallows' Eve. Earhart. Fifty-three years ago, she vanished in the South Pacific during a round-the-world flight. Authorities need your help to capture an accused killer on the run for 14 years. Unsolved Mysteries, a show that captivated and terrified audiences for over a decade. Hosted by none other than the trench coat wearing, gravel voiced Robert Unsolved Stack. Mysteries, four eerie tales for All Hallows Eve. This series gave us paranormal stories, cold case investigations, and everyday mysteries that left us sleeping with one eye open. It invited viewers to help solve the very mysteries it presented, making them feel like amateur detectives. Tonight, we'll step back into the strange world, dissecting its unique viewing experience, the genius behind its production, and of course, the unforgettable Robert Stack. From satanic panic to the tip line that sparked real-life leads, this is a strange world of Unsolved Mysteries with Robert Stack. Perhaps you may be able to help solve a mystery. The viewing experience. Imagine this, it's the late 1980s or early 90s. You're sitting in front of the TV, the lights dim to enhance the eerie atmosphere. The room falls silent except for the faint buzz of anticipation. Then it begins, the unmistakable theme song. A haunting blend of synthesizers and, and orchestral tones creeps in. The opening credits flash across the screen and a chill runs down your spine. You know you're about to be drawn into a world where the line between reality and the supernatural is thin. So thin, in fact, that it feels as if the mysteries could spill out of the screen and into your living room. That was the magic of Unsolved Mysteries. It wasn't just another true crime show you could casually watch while doing something else. No, this was an immersive experience pulling you into a universe where anything was possible. One moment you'd be gripping your seat as Robert Stack narrates a terrifying UFO sighting in the middle of nowhere. The next, your heart breaks over the unsolved disappearance of a child who vanished without a trace. It was the emotional roller coaster that set the show apart from anything else on TV. The real brilliance of Unsolved Mysteries was this ability to mix cold hard facts with ear eerie supernatural tales, creating a seamless blend that kept audiences both terrified and intrigued. You never knew what the next segment would bring, a grisly murder case that baffled detectives for years, or a ghostly apparition that haunted a small town family. This constant shift between reality and the surreal gave the show an unpredictable edge. No episode felt the same, and yet, one was just as captivating as the last. One of the most powerful aspects of the viewing experience was the show's refusal to offer closure. In most TV shows, especially in crime dramas, the narrative arc ends with the solution. The bad guy is caught, the mystery is solved, and justice is served. But not here. On Unsolved Mysteries, the stories didn't wrap up neatly with a bow. They were often left wide open, dangling in the air, haunting your thoughts long after the episode ended. The lack of resolution made the mysteries feel more personal, more real. It left you with lingering questions. What happened to that person? Where did they go? Will the family ever find peace? It forced you to live in the uncertainty, just as the victims and their loved ones had been forced to for years. And that was the real hook. It wasn't just passive TV watching. Unsolved Mysteries turned its audience into armchair investigators. The show's structure made you feel like you had a role to play in solving these mysteries. When Robert Stack would look directly into the camera, his voice somber and say, perhaps you may be able to solve the mystery. Join me, perhaps you may be able to help solve a mystery. It felt like a personal invitation to get involved. Maybe you had seen something, heard something, or knew someone with a lead. It was a call to action that turned viewers into participants, making them a crucial part of the ongoing investigations. The beauty of the Unsolved Mysteries experience was that it blurred the boundary between the viewer and the mystery itself. It wasn't just a story happening to someone else. It felt like it could happen to you, your neighbor, or someone in your town. And the fact that these mysteries are real, unsolved cases meant that the fear lingered. You could switch off the TV, but the mystery would remain unanswered, lurking in the back of your mind. Would it ever be solved? Could you be the one to crack it? Every episode left you with a sense of unease and in some cases, 
a sliver of hope. The show didn't just entertain, captivated, haunted, and engaged you for those who experienced it. Unsolved Mysteries wasn't just something you watched, it was something you felt. And it left an indelible mark on pop culture because of that immersive, interactive, and haunting viewing experience. And honestly, when the song comes up, it really triggers me because I used to watch it all the time as a kid in the 90s. And I actually had nightmares from that show. I was always so scared by Robert Stack, like walking alone in the dark and just the song, there's something about it. And so the background, the journey of Unsolved Mysteries began in 1987, but its origins were humble. What started as a series of television specials quickly snowballed into a cultural phenomenon created by John Cosgrove and Terry Dunn Muir, the show initially aired as a set of specials on NBC. Its unique premise immediately captured the attention of viewers who were drawn to the idea of an engaging with real-life mysteries, stories that weren't just for entertainment but ones where they could actively contribute. By 1988, the positive reception was undeniable and NBC greenlit the series for a full season. With its move from TV specials to a weekly show, Unsolved Mysteries became a staple of the true crime and paranormal genres long before either genre became a mainstay in entertainment. And yet, this wasn't your typical crime show. It was something much more. From the very first episode, it broke boundaries and shifted the landscape of televised mysteries. During its time on NBC, from 1988 to 1997, Unsolved Mysteries steadily grew in popularity, aided by a mix of real-life drama and Robert Stack's memorable hosting style. The network switched in 1997 when the show moved to CBS. It marked a significant moment in the evolution, though it remained faithful to its roots. Despite the change, its loyal fan base followed, keeping the show's momentum alive. Eventually, it found a home on Lifetime, where it ran until 2002, marking the end of an era. Robert Stack's tenure as host throughout this period became synonymous with the show's identity. His voice, his iconic trench coat, and his solemn demeanor were part of what made the series unforgettable. And it's true, his voice is kind of creepy. Mind worked like a television set. What if you could change channels at will, tune into programs no one else could see, and what if you could never turn the set off? But what made Unsolved Mysteries truly groundbreaking was its format. The premise was simple, yet innovative for its time. The show presented real-life mysteries, ranging from unsolved murders to disappearances, UFO sightings, and even heartwarming cases of lost loves or family reunions. There was something for everyone, true crime affectionados, believers in the paranormal, and those who simply wanted to be moved by human stories. What set Unsolved Mysteries apart was its refusal to provide neatly packed conclusions. And it wasn't like most TV shows where the story would wrap up neatly by the end of the episode. Instead, the mysteries were often left unresolved, leaving a sense of suspense that was both unnerving and thrilling. It gave the audience a role that you could be part of solving the mystery. And I think that's why I got scared of it so much as a kid too. Every episode ended with a haunting call to action. And this interactive component was key. At a time when television was a largely a one-way medium, Unsolved Mysteries invited viewers to actively engage its content. It empowered everyday people to make a difference, and the hotline set up for the viewers to call in tips became an essential part of the show's DNA, making viewers feel that their input might lead to a real-world resolution. People weren't just passively watching from their living rooms, they were part of the investigation. Tips poured in from across the country, and many led to real breakthroughs, from arrests and criminal cases to reunions between long-lost family members. The show's tagline, perhaps you may be able to help, wasn't just a catchy phrase, it was a genuine invitation. Over its 14-year run, with Robert Stack at the helm, Unsolved Mysteries amassed a cult following. The show wasn't just something you watched, it became a conversation topic the next day at school, at the office and with friends. People speculated, theorized, and debated what really happened in each episode. Fans eagerly awaited updates in the future episodes, hoping that one of their tips or maybe someone else's had helped crack the case. This sense of involvement made Unsolved Mysteries feel personal in a way that other crime shows at the time didn't. It was also worth noting that Unsolved Mysteries wasn't the first to dive into the world of unsolved cases or strange occurrences, but it was the first to package it in such an accessible and captivating way. The show structure broken into distinct, easily digestible segments allowed it to cover a wide array of topics, appealing to a broad audience. 
true crime friends were hooked by the unsolved murders and missing person cases, while the paranormal crowd couldn't get enough of the ghost stories and UFO encounters. And through it all, the personal stories of lost loves or reunions tugged at the heartstrings of viewers. Cosgrove and Muir were able to create a perfect balance, moving fluidly between heavy, heart-wrenching true crime cases and lighter, more supernatural fare. This range of topics gave the show a unique flavor, making it like a grab bag of mysteries, where you never quite knew what you were going to eat. It kept audiences on their toes, ensuring they tune in week after week, and I know I definitely watch it all the time. And the tip line. When it comes to Unsolved Mysteries, one of the most revolutionary aspects of the show was its integration of the real-time investigative tool, the tip line. This wasn't just just a show designed for passive consumption. It was open to invitation for the public to become active participants in solving real life cases. In fact, you could argue that Unsolved Mysteries was not just a television program. It was practically a nationwide investigative team. And at the center of this team was the tip line, a toll-free number flashed at the end of each episode with the haunting prompt, if you have any information, please call. Is a treasure that Babe and Doc Nost discovered an elaborate scam? Or is it real? You be the judge. Write to Unsolved Mysteries, P.O. Box 11449, Burbank, California, 91510. This simple addition, the tip line, gave Unsolved Mysteries a unique interactive quality, one that wasn't typical of television at the time. Today, we're used to hashtags, online discussion, and real-time interaction with media. But back in the late 80s and 90s, the idea that you, the viewer, could actually call in and potentially solve a mystery was groundbreaking. It turned viewers into detectives, offering them a chance to provide crucial information that could lead to breakthroughs in cases that, that had gone cold for years if not decades. The hotline was not just for show, it was a critical part of the production. As the number scrolled across the screen, viewers were reminded that these weren't just scripted narratives, they were real-life situations that needed resolution. And the cases presented were often decades old, but the open nature of the mystery kept hope alive that someone, somewhere, might have the missing piece of the puzzle. In the pre-internet age, the tip line became a tool for crowdsourcing information in a way that was utterly unique to the show. You couldn't log onto Reddit to solve a mystery or hop onto Twitter to discuss theories in real time. Instead, the toll-free number was the gateway, the direct line from the comfort of your living room into the heart of the investigation. Over the years, the Unsolved Mysteries tip line was responsible for solving hundreds of cases. Viewers didn't just call with wide wild theories, many called with crucial information that led to arrest, recoveries, and even reunions. In some instances, fugitives were apprehended directly because someone watching the show recognized their face from a reenactment or a composite sketch. Missing persons were found because a viewer recognized them, even decades after they had vanished. Families were reunited with lost loved ones, and in some cases, justice was finally served by a crucial detail phoned in by a viewer. One of the show's most notable success stories involved a tip that helped identify convicted murderer Dennis DePew, who had been on the run for nearly a year. A viewer recognized a pew from the segment, and within a short time, law enforcement tracked him down. This was just one of the many examples where unsolved mysteries proved that his audience was more than just an audience. They were essential participants in the process. And I definitely remember there was a missing person case where I lived in Victoria. It's like Michael Dennehy, and he was featured at the end of one episode in the 90s with the tip line, but the case is still unsolved. It's a really weird case. Definitely something um, worth looking into. I might do a video on it actually. Robert Stack and his trench coat. And now let's talk about the man who made Unsolved Mysteries and that is Robert Stack. His deep resonant voice was the first thing that grabbed you, pulling you in like a black hole. There was something in the way he spoke, calm, assured, yet with a hint of warning that made you take every word seriously. The two men, one black, one white, were in their late 20s or early 30s. In this country, they had earned their way into a respectable middle-class life. And I feel like the new Untold Mystery is just not the same, the one on Netflix, because it doesn't have Robert Stack. And his voice alone could send a chill down your spine. But it wasn't just his voice, it was his whole package. The music, the lighting, and of course, the trench coat. The trench coat was more than just a piece of wardrobe. It was particularly a character into itself, enhancing Robert Stack's 
persona and cementing him as a cultural icon. When Robert Stack appeared on screen, often emerging from shadowy alleyways or fog-filled streets, he didn't just look like a host, he looked like a detective pulled straight from a film noir movie. His trench coat was a perfect touch. It added an aura of mystery, seriousness, and even danger. In that coat, Stack became the visual embodiment of the show, always searching for answers but knowing that some mysteries might never be solved. The trench coat, in a way, was symbolic of Robert Stack's approach to his role. Much like a detective putting on his uniform, Robert wore the coat as a badge of seriousness. It perfectly fit with the film noir aesthetic of the show, evoking images of hard-boiled detectives from classic films, men who would stop at nothing to get the truth. The dark, often shadowy environments where Stack delivered his lines further emphasized this aesthetic. And I think that's why I always found it terrifying when I was watching him as a kid, because he was always in these creepy, dark places. He would step into a poorly lit alley, his trench coat buttoned up, and with just a glance at the camera, the tone was set. It felt like he was about to walk into a crime scene, ready to uncover the truth behind the unsolved mystery. And his role in unsolved mysteries was made even more impactful by his background as an actor. Robert Stack was no stranger to playing serious law and order roles. He had won an Emmy for his portrayal of the real-life federal agent Elliot Ness in The Untouchables. That history lent him an extra layer of authenticity. When Robert Stack talked about crime, justice, or even UFOs, you believed him. His presence was authoritative, almost paternal, as though he was guiding the audience through these terrifying unknowns with a calm, firm hand. And the production of Unsolved Mysteries was a delicate balancing act between documentary-style filmmaking and the suspenseful drama of reenactment. It wasn't easy to pull off a show that seamlessly blended with fact and fiction, real-life events, and eerie retellings, but Unsolved Mysteries managed to do it week after after week. The production team faced the challenges of making viewers feel the gravity and mystery of each case while remaining grounded in the reality of real-life stories. Achieving that was no normal feat. The recreations were a central component of this tightrope walk. In many ways, they were essential to the storytelling process. For most viewers, a verbal description of a crime scene or a strange encounter wouldn't have been enough to capture the full emotional weight of the mystery. And it's true, the reenactments, again, really scared me. And some of them obviously were a little bit cheesy, more so looking back now, but they definitely add to the ambience of the show. And they have allowed viewers to really step into the shoes of the witnesses. I found the actors they chose actually really looked like the people in real life, which I found interesting because I was re-watching a lot for this video. And it was important to remember that Unsolved Mysteries didn't have the Hollywood level production budgets that we see in today's true crime reenactments. They relied on practical effects, minimalistic sets, and a style that might seem quaint by today's standards. But the low budget kind of added an eeriness to it, the grainy quality, dim lighting, and at times awkward acting. And the show spanned across decades, covering cases from the 50s to the 90s, and the visual language of the reenactments helped transport viewers to those different time periods. Whether it was a sepia tone portrayal of a small town in the 50s or a stark shadowy recreation of an alien abduction in the 80s. Those alien abduction ones really freaked me out too. I definitely had nightmares about that. And again, the music, what really scared me, and the, the music was composed by Michael Boyd and Gary Malkin. And the music became synonymous with the shadowy, dark, and mysterious tone of the show. And the moment the first notes of the theme song are played, you knew you were in for something that would unsettle you. Something that would make you think twice about turning off the lights. And the score was minimalist, yet powerful, combining synthesizers with orchestral elements to create a sound that was eerie and suspenseful. The talent. While Robert Stack was a face and voice of Unsolved Mysteries, the show's success relied heavily on the revolving door of actors who took a crucial task of reenacting the stories. These weren't A-list stars. In fact, many of them were unknowns at the time. Actors who worked tirelessly to bring real-life events to life. Unlike fictional crime dramas where actors can take creative liberties with their roles, the reenactments on Unsolved Mysteries were grounded in real events. The actors had to walk a tight rope between acting and reenacting, ensuring their portrayals were faithful to the facts. Interestingly, though many of the actors who appeared on Unsolved Mysteries were unknown at the time, some went on to have successful careers in Hollywood, 
One of the most famous examples is Matthew McConaughey, who made his acting debut on the show in 1992. He appeared on a segment about a man who was shot by a carjacker, playing the role of the victim. Though McConaughey's part was small, it marked the beginning of what would become a stellar career, eventually leading to an Academy Award and A-list status. It's a fun reminder that Unsolved Mysteries was not only a launching pad for new actors, but also a place where Hollywood hopefuls could hone in their craft before making it big. But McConaughey wasn't the only future star to pass through the Unsolved Mysteries set. Other actors would go on to have notable careers in film and television that appeared in shows that also appeared on Unsolved Mysteries. And now let's talk about some of the notably creepy episodes. Some episodes of Unsolved Mysteries didn't just intrigue viewers, they haunted them. Long after the closing credits rolled and the TV turned off, the stories continued to linger in the minds of those who dared to watch. The brilliance of the show lay in its ability to blur the line between reality and paranormal, presenting cases that made viewers question what was real and what was simply too bizarre to explain. Whether it was a chilling cold case or a ghostly encounter or an unexplained phenomenon, Unsolved Mysteries had a way of sticking with you, sometimes for days, weeks, or years. Perhaps one of the most unsettling episodes was the infamous Allagash abductions. This case took Unsolved Mysteries deep into the world of alien and abduction lore, recounting the terrifying story of four men who claimed to have been taken abroad a spacecraft while on a camping trip in Maine. The men's stories were eerily consistent, each of them describing similar details of being subjected to medical experiments by extraterrestrial beings. The episode featured detailed reenactments of their abduction, complete with glowing lights, ominous spacecraft, and eerie dreamlike sequences that sent shivers down the spines of viewers. But what made this episode so unsettling wasn't just the dramatization, it was the haunting hypnosis sessions that revealed suppressed memories of the encounter. Even for those who didn't believe in UFOs, the episode planted a seed of doubt. What if they were telling the truth? Another episode that crawled under the skin of viewers was the case of the Black Hope Curse. In this chilling segment, the show explored the paranormal phenomenon experienced by a family living in what they believed to be a cursed land in Texas. The land had been a burial site for African American slaves, and the family claimed to experience a series of terrifying events after disturbing the graves. From eerie sightings to inexplicable deaths, the Black Hope Curse was one of those episodes that made you question whether some places truly were cursed. The episode was filled with reenactments of ghostly apparitions and unexplained occurrences, making it one of the most spine-tingling episodes of the series. The fear wasn't just in the idea of the ghosts, it was in the possibility that you could accidentally provoke forces beyond your understanding just by being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Of course, the show didn't rely solely on paranormal tales to unsettle its audience. There were plenty of cold cases that were chilling cases where the real world horror was in the details. One of the most infamous was the mysterious death of Cindy James. Cindy was a Canadian nurse who had been subjected to a series of bizarre and terrifying events over several years, including threatening phone calls, assaults, and break-ins. She was found dead under suspicious circumstances in 1989, her body bound and left in a location that made it impossible to determine how she got there. The case left viewers unnerved because Cindy's death was shrouded in so many unanswered questions. Was it murder? Was it taking her own life? Was it a staged crime? The fact that no one could figure it all out made it that much more terrifying. And to this day, Cindy's death remains one of the show's creepiest unsolved cases. Another unsettling episode resolved around the bizarre case of Don Devereux, a journalist investigating money laundering and organized crime. After Don's colleague Charles Morgan was found dead under mysterious circumstances, Devereux began to fear his own life. He believed he was being followed and that his life was in danger due to his investigation into high level corruption. What made this episode particularly eerie was the suspicion that powerful forces were working in the shadows to silence both Morgan and Dawn. The segment didn't feature supernatural elements, but it created a sense of paranoia and dread that was just as unsettling. It left viewers wondering how many real life mysteries are never solved because of un seen hands pulling the strings behind the scenes. Then there were the ghost stories, which always managed to leave viewers with goosebumps. 
One standout was the Tallman House Haunting, where Fanley Wisconsin experienced a series of terrifying supernatural events after purchasing a bunk bed. The family claimed to have seen shadowy figures, heard ghostly voices, and even witnessed objects moving on their own. The show's reenactments of the occurrences were terrifying in their simplicity. A shadowy figure standing at the end of a hallway, doors slamming without explanation, eerie whispers in the dead of night. The episode didn't just play on fears of ghosts, it made viewers question whether everyday objects like a seemingly innocent piece of furniture could somehow be cursed or haunted. Episodes like the Circleville Letters also added to the creepy factor. In this case, an anonymous writer terrorized the small town of Circleville, Ohio with threatening letters. The letters contained personal information about the recipient leading to accusations, fear, and even death. What made this case particularly disturbing was how anonymous the person was and the fact that no one was ever able to determine who was behind the letters. That is terrifying. And the idea that someone could be watching, knowing your every move, and using the information to manipulate and torment you was unsettling on a deeply personal level. The case remains unsolved, with the mysterious letter writer never identified. Of course, not every unsettling episode involved to supernatural or anonymous threats. Sometimes the real world horror that came in the form of a missing person's unsolved murders and gruesome crimes that left viewers feeling helpless. One such case was the disappearance of Tara Calico a young woman who vanished while on a bike ride in New Mexico. The mystery deepened when a disturbing photograph surfaced, allegedly showing Tara bound and gagged in the back of a van. The image haunted viewers who were left wondering if Tara was still alive or if the photo was a cruel hoax. The unanswered questions surrounding her disappearance and the chilling photograph made it one of the most disturbing episodes in the show's history. These were just a few of the many stories that Unsolved Mysteries presented to his audience. But there were the ones that dug deep into the psyche of viewers. What made these episodes stand out wasn't just the content, it was the way the show presented them. The combination of Robert Stack's narration, the haunting music, the atmospheric reenactments, and the open-ended nature of the cases made them feel all that more real, all that more terrifying. These episodes didn't just keep you awake at night, they made you question what was real, and what was a myth. The genius of Unsolved Mysteries was its ability to make the viewer a part of the story. You weren't just watching, you were left to ponder the mysteries long after the episode ended. Sometimes asking yourself, could this happen to me? Satanic panic. No discussion of Unsolved Mysteries would be complete without addressing its involvement in one of the most culturally pervasive phenomenon of the 1980s and early 90s, the Satanic Panic. During this period, fear of Satanic cults, ritualistic murders, and underground networks of evildoers swept through America, largely fueled by sensational media reports, talk shows, and yes, even shows like Unsolved Mysteries. While Unsolved Mysteries was not alone in stoking these fears, it did play its part by presenting stories that tapped into the paranoia of the time, creating episodes that were more reflective of mass hysteria than hard evidence. The satanic panic was a period of heightened fear and anxiety about alleged widespread satanic activity. In many ways, it grew out of real concerns about rising crime rates, child torment, and moral decline. But these fears soon spiraled into something much larger and more sensational, with allegations of satanic rituals, sacrifices, and underground cults dominating headlines and TV programs. Unsolved Mysteries reflected the mood of the time, offering viewers stories that played into the fears and in some cases validated them. Episodes featuring supposed satanic cults, demonic possession, and ritualistic killings were some of the most unsettling segments of the show's history. They often involved reenactments of shadowy figures and dark robes performing bizarre rituals, eerie symbols carved into trees or walls, or mysterious deaths that defied logical explanation. These episodes fed directly into the public's growing fear that they were dark, secret societies lurking in every corner of America, preying on the innocent and performing unspeakable acts of violence in the name of Satan. One notable episode that fueled the flames of the satanic panic was the 
West Memphis Three, a case that epitomized the era's fear of satanic involvement in violent crimes. Three teenage boys in West Memphis, Arkansas, were accused of killing three young children in what was alleged to be a satanic ritual. The case gained national attention, and unsolved mysteries covered it with the same eerie, suspenseful tone that viewers had come to expect. While the episode didn't directly accuse the teenagers of Satanism, it certainly played into the prevailing narrative that the crime was somehow connected to dark, ritualistic practices. Years later, it was revealed that there was little to no evidence linking the boys to satanic activity. Rather, the accusations were more of a reflection of the mass hysteria of the time than actual facts. Another episode focused on the Manta Morris cult members in Mexico, where a group led by drug lord Aldofo Constanzo was involved in grisly killings that included elements of ritual sacrifice. While this particular case did involve occult practices, it became part of a broader narrative that suggested satanic cults were operating everywhere, just beneath the surface of society. The disturbing visuals of the case and others like it left a lasting impression on viewers, reinforcing the idea of ritualistic killings connected to Satanism were very real and a threat. The show was far from alone in contributing to the paranoia. The late 80s and early 90s saw a flood of talk shows, documentaries, and news specials all focus on the same themes. Geraldo Riviera's infamous 1988 primetime special, Devil Worship, Exposing Satan's Underground, painted a terrifying picture of satanic cults operating in secret all across America supposedly kidnapping children, performing dark rituals, and infiltrating society at every level. These media portrayals were a reflection of and a catalyst for the growing public fear. But Unsolved Mysteries added a unique dimension to the phenomenon because of its open-ended format. The show often presented these stories with little resolution, leaving viewers with the chilling possibility that these cults could be operating in their own backyards. When Robert Stack solemnly delivers the lines, if you have any information, it made these stories feel not only plausible, but immediate, as though the danger could be lurking just out of sight. This open-ended created an atmosphere of suspense and fear. The real tragedy of the satanic panic wasn't just confined to television. It spilled over real-life investigations, court cases, and public policy. Innocent people were accused tried and, e and in some cases imprisoned based on little more than public fear and speculation. The infamous McMartin preschool trial, where teachers were accused of running a satanic cult and tormenting children, became one of the most publicized and costly criminal cases in American history, despite the complete lack of evidence supporting the claims. Similar accusations played out in towns and cities across the country, with communities tearing themselves apart in the search for these hidden cults and rituals. From heartwarming reunions to chilling cold cases and bizarre paranormal phenomenon, Unsolved Mysteries with Robert Stack has something for everyone. It wasn't just a show, it was a cultural phenomenon. And whether you believed in the supernatural or just wanted to solve a real life mystery, there was something for everyone and a reason to tune in. Robert Stack may no longer be with us, but his legacy and his iconic trench coat live on. So join me as we continue to explore the mysteries of the past and the strange, captivating world of unsolved mysteries. Let me know in the comments below if you watched the show a lot in the 90s. I mean, I definitely did. Like, it's still like the song still triggers me and thank you for watching and don't forget to check out some of my other dark history videos